Okay. So I know Olga in particular likes this. I, I do too, because we can go. Right to it. And, and we can go, yes, you can relate, and we can go really quickly. You know, if you are going to ride the current of deep time, if you're going to be in the field of the unconscious, of the um, place, you know, where, you know, Many scientists have said, you know, we only use 10% of our brain. If you're going to ride in that other 90%, like kind of find your way past the 10% to something more, then you're going to move from this to this because you are going to stop taking aspects of your life and, you know, gripping on them. You know? I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> and I have no idea because I've never been there before, which is why I talk about these things. <laughs> then, um, thank you, Barb. So then you're going to stop gripping. And as you stop gripping, they find their way back to where they're relating to something, linking to something. This is something that we particularly learn in the yoga. We learn it through Nia, through our dancing together and our dancing to the music and relating to our own emotions. So we're relating to something again. Right? And of course, when we, we're in class, whether it's yoga or Nia, and then we leave and then we forget all about it, and then we go on with our day. And we're supposed to be remembering this. But we go from, you know, then being um, less the doer, being in doership, and more the beer, in beership. Uh, being carried by the stream, which is one of the reasons why I like this so much, is because it really implies that if you've ever paddle boarded before, yeah, right? I, I haven't, I, John has, yeah, but it's, it's sort of like if you ever kayaked before, mm -hmm. you get in and you look from far, it's like, oh, it looks so beautiful, and you get in and you're like, oh my god, this is so much work, it's so much work, but still, you're going with something and you're being carried by the water and so it's still work but you're being carried by something the kayak the water the currents and so on and hopefully you find a place where you're carried by the current of deep time where you hop on a ride and something just starts to carry you on the charts that i gave you the i am the medicine finding that current would begin with the blue circle which would be winter <coughs> which would be trust versus fear or finding your flow versus being afraid and either stopping the flow by holding on to a rock or sitting on the bank or even swimming upstream like a salmon the salmons are supposed to uh, or, or maybe even having too much anxiety and trying to swim in the current too fast could be that too but in any case that beginning part where you start to find your flow and you sense it and you feel it. It's not something you think. It's like, oh, I found my flow. Well, maybe that thought comes later, but it's a feeling more than anything else. Like, <sighs> yes, I'm being carried. So let's just do a little practice that is that, or the beginning of that. It's a simple one. Of course, we go from simple to more complex over time, right? So if you now, last time we worked with the eyes, so we're going to work with the eyes again. <clears throat> Do something from somatic experience and organic intelligence that is called orientation. And orientation is our own <coughs> um, animal way, our own body being way of coming into a space and immediately wanting to sort of be part of it. We don't want to not be part of it, but one of the first things we do is we look and we assess for safety and danger. And, yeah. and all things being okay, then we start to approach something instead of avoid it. We start to move towards it. We want to connect with it. Mm -hmm. So in the orientation, and, and so this is, I call this the animal way because this is one of the things you learn in the end. It's like, what is my body's way? What is the body's way of wanting to be with something? Not what is my, my usual chitter chatter. The body's way is that it wants to be in this room connecting. So, so if you go ahead, I'm just gonna give you the simple direction 
and we'll do it for one minute. I'm going to count. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> you're going to let the eyes go where they will. You're going to let the head and neck turn. And you're going to engage the five senses, seeing, hearing, touching. So tasting and smelling could be part. For one minute, I'm going to be silent. So that was one minute. Yeah. What's your experience in that one minute? How long it felt. <clears throat> time lengthened. Mm -hmm. We warped time. I thought about a, um, a repetition of blue, the color blue, because there's blue on, there's just um, ever so slightly blue. Mm -hmm. Different places in the room, so mm -hmm. that kind of stood out. And I also thought about metal of the chair and the feeling of the chair being metal and cold and hard and firm. And then I remembered, I don't know if it was yesterday at yoga or at some point, you're talking about metal, the element of metal, so it just resonated with me. Mm -hmm. There was a pattern mm -hmm. going on. How's the feeling of the chair and the metal and the cold? It's, um, it feels supportive and grounded. It, doesn't like the cold isn't it just the cold isn't negative it's just um, an element of what metal could feel it just is yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. so you're noticing that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great yeah. after I noticed what I was hearing seeing touching I felt, I am glad to be here. <laughs> you know, I just felt happy to be here, and I'm super excited. And I can't get past this by something you just said, that we might have an avenue to get to that other 90%. <coughs> as though it's something we, 90% of our brain, you know, to get that to function. And if it's through our body, it's actually accessible. <coughs> and if it's through this sort of one minute exercise where we just become completely aware of where we are and what we're doing. That's exciting. That's the point. Before it was a little scary. If we're only using 10% and this is what it feels like, <laughs> you know, what would it feel like to be even at 20%? You know, or something yes. like that. And if, if this is a way of getting there, <clears throat> I'm no longer scared to go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole idea, if it's not this and my normal experience, what is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know? <laughs> oh, do you know? <laughs> can you can yes. go here? I can. I can. Are you taking us? It's, it's, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> you always want more. I'll tell you after everybody talks. Thank you. Oh, go, always thank you. Can I yes. add something from the thing that was really under my, what I was, the minute, the minute that I was placing? Is I, it used to be for me religious science was my spiritual, uh, and now it feels like this is mine. Wow! Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, I was I was a everything was focused on that, and then yes. I, that for ten years or so, I went back to old way. Now I feel back. Wow! Mm -hmm. Wow! That's neat. I like that. Now I feel back. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. even that. That's taken. I, um, I was feeling, since I took a mindfulness class, I went right back into that mindfulness and no thought, which was really f freeing mm -hmm. to not mm -hmm. be thinking mm -hmm. um, and just observing. And I, I did have one thought, and that was the inner reflection, and then that reflection, and then the external reflection. So I was in the three. But I was not thinking anything, which was mm -hmm. really just mm -hmm. those three thoughts, and then the rest was just so fun. Yeah. And, are you going to say something? Yeah. So then going back to that then, the, the no thinking, and the sensing, and the feeling, and the observing, right? And then the reflection on that, the sensing and the feeling, is different than the reflection on your thoughts. Reflection on your thoughts usually goes back into more thought, thought, yes. compartmentalizing, yes. whereas the uh, reflection on your sensing and your feeling usually is it's, it's more holistic, it's more gestalt, it's more coming together like that. So that we start to see more of the unity and the wholeness of things in sensing and feeling, and we start to see the current that rides in that wholeness of things. It's a unified current. We start to feel more unified. <clears throat> Maybe we start to feel like time lengthens even because we start to feel like there's more there in general, more space, more everything, and, and it starts to get simpler and we're more, if, if I may add, May everybody was all more relaxed, right? Receptive. So receptivity is, is a big part of moving from here to here. And we talked about that in listening, okay? In the alignment, there's still quite a bit doing. Year one alignment, there's a lot of doing, there's a lot of will. But then you go into, okay, I've, I'm, I'm applying my will, and now I'm going to start receiving. I've applied my male will, now I'm gonna start into my feminine receiving and let the two kind of work off of each other and start to feed each other. And then slowly then I move into this, which has elements of both effort and will, and I've got to have some coordination, as well as re the receiving of the current that I'm riding on. Okay, can I add something to your summary? It just made me think about, you know, Olga, you most of the time you ask like, how do I know, when do I know? And I was reminiscing and even it started with Rocco at one time telling me, keep on reading the White Belt book. And I never understood, gosh, I could almost say it by heart. Why does he want me to read it over and over again, right? Because there is really not so much reading, right? And then I start reminiscing about that the over and over, talk, you talk to us about the alignment, talk us about the listening. And, and I can't believe when you say, oh, so when will I know, when will I know? And finally, there is something to start to soften in me, something to get more liquidy. And I was thinking, everything that I heard in the last three or four years is slowly starting to take fruition. So I should stop asking, when will I know? So I feel almost like, I will know when I have to know. So, so like not getting impatient, do I have to read this again? Do I have to listen to this again? I don't, I'm not at that point anymore, you know? But things starting to kind of line up and make more sense all by themselves without thinking about it, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I just came when I felt like you made the summary and, and I kind of tried to put it into words. Yes, yes. So. Great. So trusting yes. that yeah. I, I I don't know. Yeah. You know a lot of the answers, but I do know that I do all the setup for everything. Yes. Through sensing and feeling, I I go into things and I learn how to trust what I'm sensing and feeling, and then from there, I don't know a lot of outcomes. Yeah. I don't yes. know time frames necessarily. Yes. I don't know a lot of those things, but what I know is that I'm doing the setup properly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You may have insights without thought, though. You may have insights without thought. Yeah. Yes. You know, just, it just could be 
actions that are just I had a direct. I with my yoga teacher about that, Megan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about meditation and getting insight without thinking. Mm -hmm. It's not a thought exercise at all. Mm -hmm. It never has been. Mm -hmm. But for me, I fight that that one. Yes. Because that when I'm in that thought thing, I'm right up there. Even, right. even if I'm thinking <clears throat> when I'm observing, mm -hmm. I'm there. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a tough one. You know, like Eckhart Tolle says, can you look at that and not have a, a description of it? Whatever you're thinking. Right. Then you are in a different place of experiencing it. So anyway. Yes, you're not in that upper part of the brain analyzing things. So um, I, have, I have a comment, and, I, and I, don't, I don't even know where I'm going with it other than a, apparently it's like one of these things doesn't belong, and apparently my comment was more linear, but yet I'm not very linear. So, meaning I said tangible things rather than ethereal things. And yet, I wasn't trying. That's just what came out with me. So I don't know if, I don't need to say it's wrong or it's not, but I'm frustrated right now. So I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> and, and the interesting thing is actually, because it was orientation in the animal body, mm -hmm. I would primarily be looking for tangible body things. Right, right, right. And less, less, less ethereal ones. Yeah. Yeah. Though we tend to go ethereal, and that's okay too. You know, yeah. uh, you know, so then, right, so then that's me not controlling the whatever everybody is, and it's, right, right. it's all part of it. Yeah. Then I'm extending to you that uh, you had a direct experience. Right. Yeah. Which was right on. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So. I don't know, I'm just feeling frustrated, so I yeah. apologize, but um, yes. thank you for letting me share. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing yes. and being so honest. Yes. I love it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly where we all want to be. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. When will it happen? Yes. When will it happen? It happened for no, you. No, no, I know. She was here that year was that now? Sarcastic. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and right. And then, you, right. <laughs> then you were seeing, you were always thinking, I'm in the white belt with Ken. That is actually what he wanted when you started seeing the coldness of the chair. Yes. Because he would be mad at us talking like this. Right. Ken yes. wouldn't have any of this. He would say, so, what was your sensation? Yeah. And I was really and thinking. That's interesting because I felt like <laughs> you were all that's talking right. from feeling, and I was yeah. talking from my head, but it didn't feel like it was in my head. No, you know, it wasn't so it so it it just was, and then I'm like, oh, I do. that sounded very. In in hindsight, I but think I thought what I said was heavy, but maybe it wasn't. No, yeah. <laughs> she could be going like our minds in and out of the experience with the mental mind and then back. You know. So nothing's wrong because right. we're all back and forth all the time. Nothing wrong. Right, right. right. And, because, uh, and the only thing that I would say then is that we're a body practice and not a mindfulness practice as much. Yeah. Even though mindfulness is something that we do <clears throat> pay attention to and, and use as a tool, but the, we're saying, you know what? And, and the mindfulness is good in a, in a day when there's lots of chaos. Unfortunately, it does have a tendency to separate us from the body and even bring us back to the mind. Hmm. The observer, without reflecting on actually what I'm actually truly sensing and feeling more directly, more directly. It's a tricky line. It's a tricky line for most people. If we start with the body practice and then we go to the mindfulness, then that's a different story. That's what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So as we were watching on Yangar video last night, he said, the, the sitting on the mountaintop and then reflecting is not the meditation. Mm -hmm. The body action and your reflecting on your body action is the meditation. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you are the subject and you are the object both. Mm -hmm. And the meditation is when the two fuse. You don't get closer to fusing when you are both subject and object, and it's your actions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In the moment, in the moment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, wasn't that great that our conversation <laughs> naturally got around to a deeper place? Mm -hmm. 
We just all were very trusting. Yeah. <laughs> it's good news. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's do one last one and then we're on to something else. I actually almost missed the chair. You know, I thought I had, you know, I you know, thought all the things that I was feeling, thinking, you know, I almost missed the fact that I was sitting on a cold chair. Yeah. You know, so thank you, you know, for that part. But what I realized ultimately, I was reading this in, an, in another book at one point, we're all made of the same stuff, even our brains. Yes. We're the same, they say, star stuff, you know, the, right. the, um, everything that's out there is here, here, um, in our clothes, and, and, and everything that's been created by human beings, and somehow if we can be one with all of it, <coughs> we're kind of there without thinking it, analyzing it, giving its word, giving it words. But the, the moment I realized that, um, the wood, as well as the chair, as well as me, as well as my brain, as well as I'm functioning, there were all these teeny tiny little atoms, that, and we all share the same atoms, maybe a slightly different organization. Differentiation didn't exactly disappear, but it mattered less, because we were all the same thing. Right. Even I noticed my own levels of prejudice, um, and I realized I have them, which really upsets me sometimes, you know, but it, uh, that disappeared because I realized we are the same. We are the same star stuff. All of us. Mm. You know, and everything, mm. including the earth, the planet. You know, we're all the same stuff. And it blew me away for a little while, for weeks, I think. You know, mm -hmm. but um, you were in a deep current somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being carried yeah. to other planets and everything. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, really for a visit of what, what it means to be equal, right? Yes. What it truly means to be equal is we're not as all different as we think we are. I, I'm, I'm with you, Olga. I look always more for sameness rather than differences. Yeah. Because yeah. It's, the more you see that, the more you see that, yeah, that we're sharing a lot more than we think we are. Yeah. Would the mindfulness walking be kind of a different experience because the body would be involved? It would be like, you know, sitting yes. in a chair, like yes. he was only in the mindfulness experience walking. Yes. But, you know, out of that yes. interpretive state, just being in that experience. Right? Yes, and especially if it's actually that you're actually really walking and not doing it as an exercise, right? Exactly. right? Exactly. These are exercises to bring to your life. As I say, we should be doing these things, you know, <laughs> right? And then you're drinking water and you're actually drinking water. <laughs> you like how it trickles down your throat. Yes, the it's the small the things. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, including sitting in a chair. Including sitting mm -hmm. in a metal cold chair. <laughs> and your feet are yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah, hands are cold. Yeah. I was envious of you to uh -huh. begin. I should because I didn't want to share that I'm so small. But I was thinking she got that. It, it yeah. Ken came back to me. Uh -huh. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, you, what we would find. And again, the snow knocks against mindfulness, we need it. And what we would find is we've gotten so far away from our animal body yeah. that if we tend to it, if we go back there and we just be with it in the form of sensation mm -hmm. yeah. and reflection on our current actions or being with or observing or 